Welcome to the cabin. Today we're painting the miniatures from the ABC Warriors Increase the Peace Starter Set by Warlord Games. Let's get to it. In our last video, we unboxed this new set based on the comics from 2000 AD. The release date is tomorrow, and if you're interested in ordering a copy or anything else from Warlord Games, please check out our affiliate link in the description down below. That way, you can help out the channel without any additional cost for you. Big thanks to Warlord Games once again for sending us this set and supporting the cabin. The miniatures are made of Sciocast resin. More on that in an upcoming video. So the first thing I did was to clean them in an ultrasonic cleaner with some washing up liquid. I also scrubbed them quickly with a brush. Using clippers, I removed the parts from their spruce, and I also cut off casting gates and other unwanted bits. I used a hobby knife to trim these areas, as well as removing any mold lines. For Sciocast resin, I've also found that an electric nail polisher works quite good. The gun barrels were drilled out with a pin vise, and after that I brushed off any resin dust from the cleanup process. Remember to wear a mask when working with resin. I then assembled all the parts using super glue and pinned the two different heads on Hammerstein so I could switch between them. Some miniatures have a piece of extra resin at the bottom to aid their attachment to the plastic bases. I used my tools to smooth down the edge of these and then added some green stuff to create a better transition between the resin and the base. I assembled Vulcan's altar with PVA glue in the same way I did for the huts in the Slanya starter set. Check out the video linked on screen right now if you want to see a few tips and tricks about working with MDF terrain. Let's get the biggest piece to paint out of the way first. I undercoated the altar with Mechanicus Standard Grey. To save time, I used my airbrush to lay down some highlights of Dawnstone. This was followed by Celestra Grey in the same way, a bit more selectively this time. I then used a sponge to apply Ulthuan Grey to many of the edges. Rhinox Hide was used in the same way, and I also dragged the sponge on the platform to simulate dirt and spilled oil. After all, it's here that Vulcan executes ABC warriors. To add some variety to these stains, I applied Abaddon Black in the same way. The large circle was painted with Mephiston Red, and after that I varnished everything with gloss varnish as a prep for the next stages. Using a synthetic brush, I applied Streaking Rust, an enamel color from AK Interactive. I painted vertical lines, and after a little drying time, I went over them again with Mineral Spirits to create a more realistic look. I picked out the biggest of the Vulgan icons from the transfer sheet and applied it to the red circle using Microset from Microscale Industries. I also added some microsol to make sure it was entirely smooth. Painting the terrain was really fun, but let's get to the miniatures themselves now. I came up with a plan to paint them with colors that have a metallic sheen. After all, these are war droids made of metal. I used gloss black from Green Stuff World to undercoat the models as well as the tokens. Aw, look, a little bird came to watch me on the balcony. The poor creature was cold in the Swedish winter of minus 12 degrees Celsius. Anyway, this gloss black provides a great base for the metallic look I was after. Next up, I used chrome metal, also from Green Stuff World. I diluted it with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and applied it through my airbrush. You can easily paint this on as well if you don't have an airbrush. The paint creates a very shiny silver that can even have a mirror-like surface, but it's hard to catch the effect on camera. I think you can see my hand reflecting off the armor in this shot though. The plan was to work from this chrome base coat and add transparent colors on top. But first, I wanted to add some definition to all the recesses, so I used black panel line accent color from Tamiya. 
This enamel paint flows into all the nooks and crannies very easily. I then airbrushed on Tamiya Smoke, diluted with 40% X20A thinner from below. I used this to create a subtle undershot shading. With that, the prepping was done and I was ready to paint the different wardroids. I did some tests by mixing different clear colors from Tamiya and I was able to find a few combinations that I liked. Let's start with Hammerstein and his Mark I soldiers. First up, I made a 2 to 1 mix of Tamiya Clear Yellow and Clear Orange diluted with 40% X20A thinner, which I applied on the armor insignias. I then used Vallejo Liquid Mask on these areas, as well as any details I wanted to be kept silver. This was to protect them during the next airbrushing stage. Larger details, such as the guns, were protected with masking tape. This process was used on the Volgan AK-47s as well. To achieve a slightly desaturated and pale blue color, I made a 2 to 1 mix of Tamiya Smoke and Tamiya Clear Blue, diluted with 40% X28 thinner. I applied this all over using my airbrush, but you can paint it on with a normal brush too. I wanted the armor to look a little battle-worn, so I applied Runefang Steel with a sponge focusing on the edges. Now it was time to remove the masking tape and liquid mask. I used a plastic dental flosser to start rubbing off parts of the mask and then a pair of tweezers to peel everything off in one go. That's it for Hammerstein and his soldiers, except for their red eyes. I'll show you in a bit what colors I picked for those since I used the same on Vulcan and he's coming up next. For his head and weapons, I applied a 2 to 1 mix of Tamiya Clear Orange and Tamiya Clear Red, diluted with 40% X20A thinner through my airbrush. I decided to not do any sponging on him though. Vulcan's main feature is his cloak, which I base coated with Caliban Green. I added Abaddon Black to this base color and diluted the mix with Lamian Medium, which I then applied to all the recesses of the cloak. Next up, I started adding more and more Warp Stone to Caliban Green and layered this on as thin highlights. I again used Lamian Medium for this, as well as the subsequent layers. Eventually, I added a layer of pure Warp Stone Glow. After this point, I started adding in Moot Green and continued to apply layers in the same way. I used pure moot green as a thin highlight, this time only diluted with a little water. To bring everything together, I applied a filter of warp lightning diluted with contrast medium. Vulcan's shoulder pads, as well as the lapel of his coat, were base coated with Abaddon Black. I then used Ashen Grey as a highlight. On the flat surfaces of the shoulder pads, I diluted the paint with Lamian Medium to create a better transition. These areas were then highlighted with Dawnstone, followed by a selective highlight with Celestra Grey. I used a filter of Basiliconum Grey, diluted with contrast medium on the shoulder pads to bring everything together. The gloves, red symbols and eyes were base coated with Mephiston Red. I applied Caraburg Crimson on the gloves to help add some extra contrast to them. After that, I highlighted everything with Evil Sun Scarlet. Finally, I added Wild Rider Red as a selective highlight. Like I said earlier, this is also how I painted the eyes of the Hammerstein miniatures. I painted Vulcan's anvil in the same way as the MDF terrain. The white Vulcan symbol on it, as well as on his hammer, were base coated with Celestra Grey. Using Nuln Oil, I selectively washed the eye sockets and other recesses. To brighten everything up, I applied a layer of Ulthuan Grey. Finally, I used White Scar as an edge highlight.
Now it's time to tackle Volcan's fanatic minions, the AK-47s. I settled on a 2 to 1 mix of Tamiya Smoke and Tamiya Clear Green, diluted with 40% X-20A thinner for these Vulgan war droids. Just like with Hammerstein, I sponged on Runefang Steel and removed the liquid mask after this stage. The red and white symbols on their shoulders and helmets were painted in the same way as I did with Volcan. That only left me with their eyes, which I base coated with Abaddon Black. I then added dots of white scar towards each upright corner. For the first layer, I applied McCrag Blue. This was followed by Kaladin Sky. And finally, a small line of Lothern Blue in the opposite corner to the white dot. The final miniature to paint was Howard Quartz. I painted the red, green, and blue phones in the same way as other details I've shown in this video. For the yellow phone, I used Everland Sunset as a base coat. This was highlighted with Aerial Yellow, followed by a one-to-one -one mix of Flash Gits Yellow and Wraithbone. And for the orange phone, I chose Wild Rider Red as a base coat. Subsequent highlights were done with Troll Slayer Orange, and finally Fire Dragon Bright. Howard's umbrella was base coated with Night Lord's Blue. After that, I applied the Fang as a highlight, and finally Russ Gray. I base coated the handle with Rhinox Hide, followed by Doom Bull Brown, and finally Tuscor Fur. The final detail on Howard was his brain inside the glass dome. I base coated this area with a 4 to 1 mix of Troll Slayer Orange and Word Bearer's Red. Using Bugman's Glow, I traced the general shape of his brain on top of the dome. To help add some definition, I painted a thin outline of pure Word Bearer's Red around the brain. I then added some more red to the base mix and painted this underneath the outline. To highlight the fluid beneath the brain, I painted a thin line with Fire Dragon Bright. I used rat skin flesh to mark out some basic shapes inside the brain. These were highlighted selectively with Bestigor flesh. And to really make it appear shiny, I added small dots with white scar. To bring everything together and make the brain look like it's suspended in the fluids, I painted a coat of Tamiya Clear Orange diluted with 40% X-20A thinner. I chose Tamiya Clear Green for half the tokens, again diluted with 40% X-20A thinner, and Tamiya Clear Red in the same way for the other half. The robots and tokens were varnished with gloss varnish, and for any other details I used a one-to-one -one mix of matte and satin varnish. This time I tried the Mecha Varnish from Vallejo, as suggested by Toy Dragon in Blue. It worked great, and feels very sturdy. I applied PVA glue on the bases, and then used a custom basing mix, which was a combination of Base Ready City Rubble, Grim Dark City Rubble, and Vallejo Light Slate Grey pigments. The final touch was to paint the base rims with Abaddon Black. And there we have it. The entire Increase the Peace starter set for ABC Warriors painted and ready for battle. I had a blast working with this set, and it's so fun to see everything together on the tabletop. 
I'm quite satisfied with how the metallic colors turned out, and I like how each type of war droid has a distinct look on the battlefield. We really hope you enjoyed the video, and would truly appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. That way you won't miss out on our future content, which includes a behind-the-scenes tour of Warlord Games. So stay tuned for that video, and if you want, you can check out our affiliate link in the description down below. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Good luck with your miniatures.